What's up guys? Uh, apologize if I'm off a little bit this episode. I'm recovering from a cold, but yesterday I tweeted out um, a tweet that said basically, hey, pay attention and make sure that you're using database indexes or indices on your database for the queries that you do because um, on a somewhat small database I had, it's about 500 megabytes, um, a query on that that just said, give me the records in this table um, and match these two columns, that would take three seconds in our database, which is really slow. And if you add database indexes to it, it went down to an, on average something like 2.3 to 3 milliseconds instead. So it was, it was basically a thousand times improvement, which is really impressive. So um, this is one of those features that was, you know, not covered enough in most of the tutorials and things. So it's kind of assumed that if you're gonna get deeper into SQL stuff, that's not where Rails people are gonna talk about this stuff. You can go learn about SQL on your own, but I wanna talk about that because it's important to actually making fast Rails applications. Now this isn't something you're gonna to have to care about for a long time because uh, most of your applications aren't gonna hit these performance problems too quickly. It requires a fairly good chunk of data in your system, but it can really, really improve your query speed. So in this episode, we're gonna open up a really simple Rails application that I built. Um, there's really nothing to it. Let's open up the schema file, um, <clears throat> and we'll see what we've got here. So I have a user's table with an email and a sign-in count, and that's it. There's nothing more to it. Um, and I've gone and used the faker gem to create somewhere over two million uh, number of user records. So if we open this uh, database file up, this is just our SQLite database. That's about 200 megabytes of user data. Um, so the two million records kind of translate into a 201 megabyte database file in SQLite. So you can see that we're already starting to push a pretty large amount of data at two million records. And if we open up this in our console, we can see that the user count is 200 or 2.23 million uh, records. So that's quite a few records. And I have an email address that I generated here that we can go look up the first user and we'll look up this other user to see what our performance is like for our queries. So you can see here that when I did a count, a simple count on the user table, it took 97 milliseconds. And normally if you're doing this in your application, you're probably doing this in development with a small database and you'll notice that that's like 0.1 milliseconds, something super fast. But even grabbing um, the, so grabbing the first record here is actually pretty fast. It's 0.2 milliseconds. So that's really, really quick. But if we were to go and do queries on this database, um, then it becomes a little bit uh, tougher to do performance-wise for the database. So let me grab this and paste that in. And so if we try to find the user where the name or the email is Morgan, um, we're gonna see some pretty large query times. Now mine were on uh, my example the other yesterday was that mine were about ten times that. 10 times slower than this. Um, and I had about a three times larger database. So this even gets impacted a little bit more when you also query for multiple things and you say, well, I only want where the sign in count is 47 or whatever. So you will have different, you'll have different tables you're querying against, different columns you're querying against. But the more of these you kind of um, add in there, the more complicated your queries become, the slower your database ends up being, and indexes are really designed here to solve this problem. It shouldn't take you um, a third of a second in order to grab the users that match this email address. That's pretty slow, and it's gonna make for a very slow web application, because you're probably gonna be doing a handful of queries, and if they're all taking a third of a second, your website is gonna take at least a second to generate before it even gets sent back and forth to the user's browser, and that's unbelievably slow. So before we go implement uh, database indexes in our example, 
Let me mention real quick that you're going to want to track your production SQL queries and monitor their performance when this becomes a problem. Number one, you can probably just look in your Rails logs. If you're tracking the SQL queries in your logs, you can just look at those and check that once in a while and just see how slow they're going. Um, but if you're using something like Heroku, Skylight, New Relic, any of those tools that actually monitor your database query performance, you can just use those and they often give you tools or easy ways to say, give me the slowest database queries and then you can go there and start focusing your time and knocking those off the list. So our example is really simple. We need to index the user table here um, and we're probably gonna normally be doing queries where the email address um, needs to be matched but maybe we're also doing multiple column queries. So we're saying where the email is this and the sign-in count is whatever. This is just an example, but if you're searching for different things, you're probably doing you know blog posts that were published at uh, any time after this time, and then they're also not in draft status or something like that. So you're probably, in most cases, searching on multiple columns. So we're gonna talk about um, how to add an index for multiple columns and how that benefits you um, in your database queries. Now Rails provides an add index method that you can call in your database migrations. You probably have seen this in there in a couple places like your device migrations, um, but for normal scaffolds and stuff that you do, you probably haven't automatically added those. And you don't really need to add indexes until you uh, know exactly how your app application is going to function so you can add the proper indexes in. If you add too many indexes, your database has to, every time you have an index, it has to keep updating the main table, has to update the index. Anytime you insert a record, it has to do it multiple times or update a record as well. So you actually have to keep uh, an eye on how many indexes you're adding because number one, you're eating up more storage space, and number two, you're slowing down your inserts and your updates in your database. So while this improves query performance, reads, it actually slows down writes a little bit. So you're getting the trade-off there, um, and in most cases, you're doing heavier on the reads, so it's okay to add some indexes in there. Just don't go too overboard with them unless you know exactly what you need. So the add index method really just requires two things. Number one is the table name, and number two is the columns you want to index. So if you're querying on a single field all the time, um, like an ID, in the database, that's automatically going to be uh, indexed. So the primary keys are automatically indexed for your records. But if you query on something like an email address because your users log in with their email, then you want to add an index for, say, the users table and the email column. Or if you're using usernames to log in, you would want to index the username column. Or if you allow both, you might want to uh, add separate indexes for each one so that you could query those as well. Now, if there's cases where you actually query for two columns at the same time and you say where their email address is this and active is true, then you can actually create a index that includes both of those. And in the second, uh, second parameter, you would pass in an array of the multiple column names. So this would create an index on two columns and it would allow you to make those queries faster. So in our example here, if we did the query on the email and sign in count all the time, then we could actually say, let's index both of these together and then that will make that query much, much faster. So this example here also has the unique uh, option turned on and that basically is gonna say, you know, if you applied this to your user model or table and you had the email column is unique, then it would allow you to never be able to insert the same email into the database multiple times. So if you ever tried to sign up twice with the same, with an email address that was already in the database, it's gonna give you an error um, on a database level and then you can also do the Rails um, validations for uniqueness on top of that. So you can enforce your data 
on validations inside the database, um, they're just a little bit more simple in your database than they would be in Rails. But it's always good to be able to do that when you know for sure that you never ever want um, duplicate, for example, emails in your users table. So let's actually jump back to our application and run Rails generate migration and we'll add index to user uh, to users. And I'm going to just go and modify this migration myself. Um, so what we'll do is we'll open up that migration and here we'll just say add index to the users table. And we're going to uh, optimize this for the case of querying for just the email and for the email and the sign-in count. And one of the cool ways that this works um, is that you, on your database level, it indexes them starting leftmost first. So in this example, if you were to query just on the email address, this index that does two columns will actually improve the performance of just querying for the email include and it will also improve the uh, performance when you say where email is this and sign in count is that so it will improve both cases um, but it wouldn't if you ever queried based on purely the sign in count you would have to add a separate index for that so the way that the database migrations really uh, improve things is when you make sure that they all match or just the first you know, the first ones are, are matches. Um, we're not going to make this a unique uh, thing or anything. Um, we're just gonna add an index to this. Um, and then you could also add a separate index just on email that was unique as true if you'd like to go do that. So if we run rakeDB migrate here, this will take a while because what it's doing is it's going through all of the existing data in our database and indexing all of that. Now this is pretty quick because uh, we only have like 2 million records, So, but it did take 2.8 seconds to index all of those columns. So earlier when we created this database with the 2 million records, we had exactly 201 megabytes of storage space used. And after adding this index, we actually have 279 megabytes of storage used, which means that this index, this one index, uh, took up an extra 78 megabytes of space just to store the index for the email addresses and the sign-in count. So that's quite a bit of extra space required for that. We almost, uh, we almost had a 50% increase in storage size of our database just by adding that one index, which is quite a lot. But let's open up our Rails console now and let's grab this query that we had before. So we'll grab, um, we'll grab this longer one and we'll paste that in, but we'll do just on email first and see how fast that went. So this time we got back the record in 0.3 milliseconds compared to our 344 milliseconds uh, query before the index. That's a huge improvement. And if we go paste in the full query, um, we'll do this again. This time, this one did it in 0 0.4 seconds. And of course, it's a little bit more complicated because it actually needs to um, check the sign-in count as well. Um, and this is just a massive, massive improvement for both of those queries by adding that index. Now, I wanna encourage you to actually go ahead and benchmark your code before and after you do these things. Um, just so that you know for sure that it's doing what you think it's doing. In our case, we can definitely see that um, just by running our two examples, but uh, you want to actually run this, you know, a thousand times or 10,000 times to make sure that you have a statistically significant speed improvement. Um, and you don't wanna go apply these indexes blindly. And it definitely helps to have a tool like um, your production logs or New Relic or Skylight or whatever you want to use to see the performance of the queries in production and then kind of go through those and figure out these seem to be called the most often and they're generally the slowest. So if we added indexes to those or did tweaks to them, um, that would improve the performance of our, our application significantly. 
So use the tools to your disposal, but don't go adding indexes all over the place because you'll hugely increase the size of your database for no benefit if you're not actually making queries that take advantage of those indexes. So that's it for this episode, just a rough introduction to indexes, what they are, how to apply them, and how to think about using them, um, and just monitoring your production application for performance uh, improvements on indexes.